assalamu alaikum everyone so for assets and bases what you need to first remember is the definition because that definition is used many times so first definition that you need to know about is what exactly is an asset so asset is anything that takes h positive now what the examiner might try to do is trick you by saying instead of calling it h positive by calling it a proton but that doesn't matter because you know proton and h positive are both the same thing the second thing that you need to know about is that if acids give protons then bases accept protons all right so that's the second important point that you need to remember that acids give protons and bases accept protons all right so that's the second thing the third thing that you need to know is what is the difference in alkali and a base so alkali is anything that accepts h positive but in water and base is anything that accepts h positive regardless of whether there is water or not so that is an important differentiation between acids and uh, bases and alkalis how do you know which is alkali and which is not just remember any soluble hydroxide is alkali so that's remember uh, snap salts you know, remember they are alkalis so uh, hydroxide with sodium potassium those kind of things they are going to be alkalis they are going to be soluble in water next thing that you need to know is colors and that is very important for o levels and igcse both of them so just remember the ph scale ph scale is a way for us to remember how things differ so for example it starts at 1 ends at 14 and in the middle you have 7 other important numbers that you need to know you need to know about 4 you need to know about 10 all right so that is what you need to know that you have 4 7 10 in the middle of 1 and 14 so how do they like uh, like what is the significance so the first thing you need to know is that 7 as you all know is neutral okay so 7 is neutral from 7 to 14 you have base from 7 to 1 you have acid and interestingly the closer anything is to 7 the weaker it is it doesn't matter whether it's base or acid so for this portion you have weak acid and for this portion you have weak base for this portion you have strong base and for that portion you have strong acid ab agar wo aapse puchta hai that there is a strong acid to uski ph ab 1 pick kar lo 2 pick kar lo 3 pick kar lo for a strong base 11 12 13 even 14 is fine so sodium hydroxide they can ask you for recommending a ph value or picking a ph value any of those things can work and we know for all of that that it's going to be acids and bases based on the ph scale that you have how does this relate to so the only way to measure ph so that's also another important thing the only way to measure ph is by knowing the using the universal indicator so universal indicator is the only thing that allows you to measure ph so the colors go red orange yellow green blue and violet and the green color is at the neutral one so just remember the important number uh, colors you need to remember the blue side is base b for base b for blue if you want to remember it that way and for acid it is red another way to remember it red for acid is now the other indicator so ye cheez zehn mein rakhni hai that the only way of measuring ph is by measuring uh, the acid or base using in universal indicator or even a neutral thing lekin agar aapko sirf uska nature pata karna hai ki wo acid hai ya base hai for that you can go for litmus you can go for uh, methyl orange मिथाइल uh, में बहुत सारे होते हैं मिथाइल रेड भी होता है मिथाइल ऑरेंज भी होता है स्क्रीन भी होता है लेकिन हम उसमें नहीं जाएंगे मिथाइल ऑरेंज एंड द लास्ट वन दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर इज आई थिंक दिस शुड डू बिकॉज फिन ऑफ क्लीन इज समथिंग दैट यू विल नेवर बी आस्ट अबाउट क्वेश्चन इज दैट कैन पी एच बी जीरो नाउ टेक्निकली पी एच कैन नॉट बी जीरो all right so that is a possibility that if the ph is zero that means concentration of h positive ion is zero so that means the thing doesn't have any h positive ion okay so yeah it can be zero for things that doesn't have any h positive ion which means now acid and a base and a neutral wo hai nahi wo consider nahi ho sakta because it's not in the game all right so the colors that you need to remember for litmus it's red for uh, acid and blue for base so it is pretty simple you just need to remember that litmus is red in acid and blue in base now for methyl orange 
वॉट मेनी स्टूडेंट्स आस्क अबाउट इसके ऑरेंज कलर कप पिक करना है सो द थिंग इज डोंट पिक ऑरेंज दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके डोंट पिक ऑरेंज द रीजन बिकॉज वॉट इट डज इज फॉर वेनी वीक एसिड एंड फॉर वीक बेसिस इसका कलर ऑरेंज होता है दोनों में ऑरेंज हो सकता है सो हम उस तरफ जाएंगे ही नहीं बिकॉज इट्स गोइंग टू कंफ्यूज अस और इट्स पॉसिबल कि एम एस में मार्क्स स्कीम में उसने इस दफा रेड बोल दिया एसिड को और अगली दफा बोल दिया बेस को तो हम ऑरेंज पिक नहीं करेंगे All right. So what will we pick? We just have two colors. We have red for acid and yellow for base. अच्छा. अब इसमें ये चीज़ें इनमें रखनी है. That for checking if something is neutral, what do you do? And that is something that examiner who is uh, they can be very tricky about it. So how do you know that in indicators को use करके हम neutral चीज़ check करें? So it's really simple. You take red, it doesn't change. You take blue, it doesn't change for litmus. You take methyl orange, whatever color it had. Methyl orange won't help us in this, but litmus can. Litmus paper dip करे, red का red ही रहे, blue का blue ही रहे. Both of those tests confirm कि वो neutral है. अगर blue से red हो जाए और red का red ही रहे, that just tells us that it is acid. So that means the color change is the indicator. So color change is necessary for confirmation of something being acid or base. आप कहते हैं कि जी red एड किया था और रेड ही रहा है दैट इज नो इंडिकेशन वेदर दैट इज एसिड और नॉट ये चीज सेन में रखिएगा एग्जामिनर कैन ट्रिक यू ऑन दैट इफ द रेड डज नॉट चेंज डज नॉट टेल मी वेदर इट्स एसिड और न्यूट्रल इट जस्ट टेल्स मी इट्स नॉट बेस ओके सो दैट्स एन इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्ट टू रिमेंबर नाउ समथिंग दैट यू नीड टू नो दैट व्हाट एग्जैक्टली इज एन एसिड एंड एसिड्स दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर सो यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दैट यू हैव HCl HNO3 एंड H2SO4 दीस आर द थ्री Acids that you need to know about. Similarly, for the organic acids, you need to know about CH three C double O H, because this is ethanoic acid. Okay, so this is the these are the four acids you need to know about. And remember that this is the H that goes away in ethanoic acid. So ethanoic acid, me you have C double O H or both C double O H. Wala H is what makes it acid. CH three wala koi bhi hydrogen, it will not be lost. Okay, and similarly in these you have H H H from H C L H N O three H two S O four. What the examiner does, especially when it relates it to moles, is that they can ask you for H two S O four and H two S O four is special because it gives two hydrogen ions per molecule. So in any neutralization reaction, you just need to remember that it is not. It does not matter whether you have H C L H N O three or H two S O whatever you have. When neutralization happens. the concentration or the moles of h positive ion should equal the moles of oh negative ion okay it's not about whether it is h2so4 or hcl or whatever figure out how much h positive ions are there so if it is h2so4 you have some moles of h2so4 usko double kar dein because every molecule of h2so4 will give two hydrogen ions okay what about bases so for bases you have three or four different categories of bases you have metal hydroxides and metal hydroxides jo soluble honge wo alkalis honge jo insoluble honge they are simply bases so snap again i keep referring to that so snap hydroxides are soluble and they are alkalis similarly you have metal oxides you have metal carbonates and the fourth category of bases that you have is ammonia and why is this important because ammonia is the one that accepts h positive but does not make water hydroxide will make water with acid oxide will make water with acid carbonate will make water with acid okay carbonate also gives carbon dioxide and remember the carbon dioxide test the gas test that we did so you have to refer to that in case you want to confirm whether something is basic or not or if something is a carbonate or not another important thing to remember about carbonates is that carbonates will give you carbon dioxide that's one and then calcium carbonate is an important carbonate that you need to know about you need to know that calcium carbonate breaks down if you give it heat and it gives you calcium oxide which is lime or slake lime which we dissolve in water to treat soil so ye lime family we talked about it in the first lesson in rapid revision session so remember that lime family is closely related to calcium carbonate because that is the major a uh, element of that major compound in that list so metal carbonate they are basic ab yahan par baat aa jati hai ki what about amphoteric things so for amphoteric just remember three of them so there is aluminum 
there is uh, zinc and there is lead, but you don't need to remember for lead. So aluminum and zinc carbonates, aluminum and zinc oxides, they are amphoteric. So their bases are amphoteric. So which means that they can react with base as acid and with acid as base. So isko aap exam mein kaise check karenge paper one mein. So paper one mein they can tell you that a certain carbonate reacts with acid as well as base or a certain oxide reacts with acid and a base. So figure out which one it is. So it's really simple. It's going to be either aluminum or zinc. Similarly, they can add that to their salt analysis questions. Kaise? Wo aap se ye sakta hai that a certain oxide reacts with acid as well as a base. And it is insoluble in aqueous ammonia or in excess of aqueous ammonia. So it's come a little bit aluminum key bad correct. You aluminum is the one that is insoluble and it is also going to make amphoteric base. Similarly, agar wo deta hai that it is soluble in excess ammonia. So that is going to be zinc agar wo amphoteric bhi hai or agar wo dissolve bhi ho hai. So that is one major difference in aluminum and zinc. Then zinc ions are soluble in excess ammonia. Or we could relate kar sakta hai. and these are insoluble in excess ammonia. So that is one difference that even the similarities that they are both amphoteric oxides. And the second one is that they are both uh, one is insoluble and one is insoluble. So that is how you know or how you can differentiate in your MCQs. Neutralization ke upar aap se equation agar wo pooch leta hai. So that is Clearly H positive and OH negative making waters. Clear as that. Achha, ab par, there is a question that sometimes asked is that they have given you an acid and they're like, okay, pick the one where it is not a typical acid. So how do you pick that option where it's not a typical acid? So acids get typical reaction. They claim. There are two reactions. One is displacement. Displacement is a typical reaction of acids. Q, anything that is more reactive than H positive, they replace it. Simple as that. Anything that is more reactive than H positive will be replaced by a metal. Uh, people on Instagram, thank you so much. You can join the YouTube live session because I'm sharing screen and all that. It will help you out over there. More clarity, of course. So for acids, you have displacement reaction and that displacement reaction is simple. Something that is more reactive, let me call it M, it is more reactive than H positive. It's going to replace it. How? So you take calcium, for example. So calcium with HCl, it simply gives calcium chloride and H, H2 gas. Now the important point, or how do you know actually you make the ionic equation. Ionic equation, you need to know the states. So calcium is a metal. Every metal is solid except for mercury, but the reaction is not the Then this is aqueous. This is whether it's aqueous or not doesn't matter, but I'll come to that in a bit. I'm keeping it empty for now. And then we have gases here. Okay, so calcium is solid remains as it is H positive. Cl negative, calcium chloride, Ca2 positive, chloride, Cl negative, and H2. Notice that I did not balance it because I don't need to at the moment. Now I'll cancel out the things that did not show chemical change. Things that did not show chemical change. Chloride here, chloride here did not change. You, you can see calcium oxidize why H positive reduce why. And now you can balance if you want. And this shows that a reaction has occurred and that is displacement reaction. So it is note karne wali hai, a typical acid reaction that gives H2 gas or H2 gas. Ke aapko test pata hai. So that is one reaction. A typical acid reaction is that it gives hydrogen gas. The second typical acid reaction is where it reacts with base. So acid base neutralization. That is another typical reaction. A poor reaction kisi bhi base ke saath ho sakta hai. In charo mein se koi bhi. Metal hydroxide ke saath hoga, paani ban jayega. Koi salt ban jayega, but we don't care about it. It's a water that matters. Metal oxide ke saath karega, paani ban jayega. Metal carbonate ke saath banega, paani ban jayega. Sure, carbon dioxide and salt is made, but that's besides the point. A typical reaction of acid and base provides water, except if it's ammonia. So acid plus any base, so whether it's metal oxide, metal hydroxide, uh, metal carbonate, I'm just keeping a generic metal here. So that when they react, either it's produced, it's going to produce water and something else. We don't care what that is at the moment, but it will produce water. And acid and ammonia will produce salt. That's another typical acid reaction. Iske lava koi bhi reaction reaction You can have precipitation reaction. You can react HCl with something like barium nitrate. And 
let me do that. So barium nitrate reacting with HCl. So they are both aqueous. They both dissolve in water. When they react, what happens? Barium replaces hydrogen and you get barium chloride, but turns out barium chloride is solid, insoluble. Okay. Oh, sorry. Barium chloride is not, uh, I wanted to use H2SO4. So you have H2SO4 here. They're both aqueous. It will produce barium sulfate, which is insoluble. And then it will also produce nitric acid. This is not a typical acid reaction. acid acid. property show And that is also something that they can ask you about. Here, acid is acting as salt. And that might be surprising for some students. Acid salt So remember, anything with positive and negative ions is salt. So salts ke jitne bhi humne reactions padhe, precipitation reaction padha hai, jisme to aqueous salt, ek insoluble, ek soluble salt banate hai. Acids can do that, but this is not a typical acid reaction. It's a typical salt reaction. So that is an option that you can be asked about. And that is how you identify ke do typical reactions hai acids ke displacement of hydrogen and acid with base producing water or salt. That's it. Iske alawa koi bhi acid ka reaction hai. Koi aisa reaction jo aapne nahi bhi dekha. That is not typical, which means you can identify ki theek hai. That is acid reaction, but it's not a typical acid reaction. Next thing that you need to know about is how you control pH of soil. We are an agriculture country. It's a very important reaction. How do you remember that? You need to know that you can treat acidity by using calcium hydroxide. So again, lime family, I keep on referring to that. You have limestone. You have slaked lime, you have lime water and just lime. So what are the formulas? So calcium carbonate is limestone, calcium oxide, calcium hydroxide solid. That is slake lime, calcium hydroxide aqueous. That is lime water and calcium oxide is just lime. Now in case the mal can calcium carbonate, what you need to know, you need to know that calcium carbonate is added to blast furnace because you want to treat impurities. So this is added to blast furnace. Okay. That's one fact you need to remember. Then you need to remember that calcium carbonate is affected by acid rain. So the acid rain affects it, damages it, breaks it down into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And it's important because we have animal shells that are made of calcium carbonate. We have marble buildings that are made of calcium carbonate. We have calcium carbonate deposits on uh, beaches on uh, under in even underwater. So having acid water or acid rain will affect it. So calcium carbonate. Ke mein ye ek cheez aapko Similarly, you need to remember that it decomposes again, a similar reaction, but it decomposes to make calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. And this is an endothermic reaction. So ye decomposition ki classic example hai, that it's an endothermic reaction. So calcium carbonate has many effects. Obviously you need to not forget that it is basic at the end of the day. So that is one thing you need to know about slake lime. You need to know that it is used to treat soil acidity. Lime water can you add karte kyunke wo zyada bhi ho sakta. but this thing, because it's slightly soluble in water, it affects it as much as we need to or baki ka sara hum utha lete. Lime water is used to test for carbon dioxide and calcium oxide is used to make cal calcium hydroxide. Iske upar koi question nahi aata. So you need to know about these things in the lime family. So don't forget them. Make sure you remember this. All right. So that's soil acidity. Then aajate ke ammonium salt kaise react karte hai. And that is something that many students unfortunately struggle with. So ammonium salt is very interesting by the way. I find them quite interesting because they have certain properties which are quite useful for us. So number one, ammonium salts are acidic. And it's interesting because ammonia is base. We know that ammonia is base. So how are ammonium salts acidic? Ammonium salts give H positive and ammonia out. So ammonium salt banta kaise? You take ammonia, you react it with acid, you get ammonium salt. So agar ammonia hai aur usko mein HCl se react kar raha, I'll get ammonium chloride because ammonia is going to get that H from HCl. Agar mere paas se koi aisa acid hai, is mein do hydrogen hai. So it's going to give two ammonium ions in there and it's going to give sulfate. So that's one important characteristic of ammonium salt that they are acidic. 
because they are going to give H positive when I reverse them. So if I dissolve it in water, it's going to give ammonium ion, which will break down to give that. So I, as I was saying, ammonium salt. So this portion has been canceled out, but doesn't matter. So the first thing you need to know about ammonium salts is that they're acidic. Because many students do not know about it, unfortunately. So this is acidic. It gives H positive when you dissolve it in water. Second, it can react with acid because it's going to give H positive. And it can react with base because jo acid is missing niklega, wo base ke saath react kar sakta hai. So there was this question in, uh, in past papers about this, that you have ammonium salt that is reacted with a base and ammonium salt that is reacted with acid. So what will happen? So you keep in mind that ammonium salt can be broken down to produce. So for example, I have this. It can be broken down to produce ammonia as well as H2SO4. So not only is it acidic, it can also produce ammonia gas. So if you heat it, it will break down to give ammonia gas. If you if you react it with any acid, it will ammonia part will react with that, and H2SO4 will be left over. Okay. So this means what? That if I take ammonium salt and I put it in H2SO4, so what will happen? The ammonia in there it will react with H2SO4. So I'll just have acidic part left. Okay. Uh, अगर मैं इसको किसी बेस के साथ रिएक्ट करवाता हूं तो द एसिड पार्ट विल रिएक्ट एंड आई विल जस्ट हैव द बेस लेफ्ट ओके सो दैट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आईडिया दैट आई कैन रिएक्ट अमोनियम सॉल्ट विद बोथ एसिड एंड बेस सेपरेटली एंड आई विल हैव समथिंग लेफ्ट ओवर व्हिच इज ऑपोजिट टू व्हाट आई रिएक्टेड विद सो अगर मैं अमोनियम सल्फेट को एसिड में ऐड करूंगा एंड एसिड बीइंग द लिमिटिंग रिएक्टेंट देन आई विल जस्ट हैव अ अ अमोनियम सॉल्ट लेफ्ट और एसिड पार्ट लेफ्ट इफ आई हैव बेस and i reacted with that and base is in uh, limiting reactant as a limiting reactant so that will be the completely reacted with acid and ammonia part will be left over so that is something that uh, ammonium salts are interesting for third thing that you don't need really need to remember is that they sublime usko chhod de in case wo aapse information de deta hai agar aapko wo bata deta hai ki ye ek sublime karta hai so you just need to know what sublimation is Okay, so you need to remember that sublimation is something that when solid directly changes to gas and that sublimation and ammonium salts are an example of it in case the examiner brings it up. You don't have to know about it right away. All right, so that was acid basis. Now moving on, we have oxides. Oxides, as I've told you earlier on as well, oxides may pehli baat to ye cheez in rekhne, if they're not snap, they're insoluble. Okay, so you have oxides that can be of metal. You have oxides that can be of non-metals. Okay, in metals you have two categories. You have the basic oxide and you have the amphoteric oxide. Okay, and in non-metals you have two categories. You have neutral oxides and you have acidic oxides. All right. Okay, so what are basic oxides? You don't need to remember. Just remember. That aluminium and zinc are amphoteric oxides. So aluminium oxide is amphoteric, which is Al2O3. Zinc oxide, ZnO, that is amphoteric. In ke ilawa koi bhi aapko agar yad karna hai to wo basic hai. I'm not saying ke iske ilawa amphoteric hote nahi hai. What I'm saying is ke aapko agar koi question aayega to inhi do ke baare mein amphoteric aayega. Kisi aur ka amphoteric ka question nahi aayega. You just need to remember these as amphoteric. Any other that they give. Either they will tell you if it is amphoteric, मतलब लिथियम का आ जाता है, तो they'll tell you whether it's amphoteric or not. But any other like iron or copper or जो भी आता है, वो आपने याद रखना है कि वो basic है. In neutral, you need to remember that carbon monoxide, water, and nitrogen monoxide are neutral. ये तीन neutral हैं. Turns out that you need to remember that they all have just one oxygen in them. बेसिक में एक खास तौर पे जिसका आपको याद होना चाहिए दैट इज कॉपर ऑक्साइड एंड यू जस्ट नीड टू रिमेंबर दैट इट इज ब्लैक इन कलर एंड इट इज यूज्ड टू रिएक्ट विद स्टीम एंड दैट इज हाउ यू गेट कॉपर आउट सो कॉपर कैन बी एक्सट्रैक्टेड थ्रू रीडॉक्स रिएक्शन ओके सो दैट इज समथिंग यू नीड टू रिमेंबर सो कॉपर पिंक कलर का हमें वहां से मिल जाएगा सो रीडॉक्स विद हीटेड हाइड्रोजन दैट विल गिव यू कॉपर मेटल बैक so that is something you need to know about oxides and that concludes this chapter about salts we talked about it in detail the other day how you can prepare salts how you can check whether salt is soluble or not so if you have any particular questions about them i'll be happy to answer those 
otherwise we'll move on to other one uh thank you so much for uh, but i will talk about organic chemistry i i think i already have in one of my videos but we will talk about organic at the end of this lesson if we have time otherwise we can all, always have another class all right so next we are going to move on to some important small compounds like ammonia ammonia ke bare mein kya batana chahiye ammonia ke bare mein uski reaction ki equation jo ki ek badi classic si equation hai you need to know about that you need to know that it is a reversible reaction we already covered reversible reaction in one of the videos you can go to the playlist to check those out so that is one thing you need to remember uh, that this is the reaction haber process you need to know about its conditions you need to remember that is done at 450 degrees celsius sure you can pick any value that is between 250 and 450 similarly you need to remember that it is done at 200 atmospheric pressure and you need to remember that you have iron as a catalyst here so that is a fact you need to know about uh, other thing you need to know about ammonia is that where do you get this nitrogen and hydrogen so nitrogen you get from air so this you get from air and this you get from hydrocarbons i'm going to write it c's just to show that this is hydrocarbons so you get nitrogen from air and hydrocarbons are what you, what give you uh, these uh, uh sorry hydrogen gas hydrocarbons ka cracking ka reaction hota hai jisse ye mil jate hain aapko you need to remember the conditions you need to remember that ammonia is basic you need to remember its reaction as we have talked about then you need to remember that ammonia makes ammonium and that ammonium as well as nitrate it is used to make those which means nitrogen in the fertilizer is very useful for plant growth so you use any fertilizer that is based on ammonia or nitrate because you want to increase the crop yield you need to increase the plant growth you need to promote that so that is where you use this uh for that the reaction usually asks you about percentage composition so percentage composition of nitrogen in these fertilizers is what you need to know about to agar aapko koi do teen दे देता है आपसे कहता है कि सी एच टू एन ओ सी एच टू ये एक आपके पास आ गया है फॉर एग्जाम्पल कोई भी फर्टिलाइजर लेट सपोज ये मिल गया या आपको ये मिल गया है तो आपने देखना है कि इसको आप कैसे यूज कर सकते हैं टू मेक श्योर दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम नॉट श्योर इफ दैट मेक्स अ really useful fertilizer or not but whatever fertilizer they give you they can give you ammonium nitrates for example so ammonium with sulfate or ammonium nitrate whatever they give you you need to be able to figure out what's the percentage composition of nitrogen in that you can go to the moles lesson if you want to check about that in detail second thing you need to know about is that if you react this ammonia and you have these ammonium fertilizers in high quantity it can lead to eutrophication so this is the last year in which they are going to ask about eutrophication it is no longer in the syllabus from next year onward so eutrophication ke four steps hain wo steps in that order are what you need to know about so you need to know that what happens is the number one you have nitrates or you have these fertilizers which are leaching from farmland to these water bodies so pehle to ye hai ke you get these nitrates or sulfates or these fertilizers and fertilizers leach into the water bodies okay then because you have a high amount of fertilizer there there is going to be a uh, what we call algal bloom algal bloom simply is a word to mean that you have a large and a rapid growth of algae okay so algae growths rapidly so that's the second step so you need to remember that step what that means is that now oxygen is used up you don't need to mention how that happens so of course there are many different reasons why oxygen is all used up photosynthesis nahi hota jo hoti hai wo dissolve hui hui wo absorb ho jati hai the water level is covered uh, water surface is covered so no more is absorbed so things like that but we don't need to go into the detail we just need to know that oxygen is used up and that means that aquatic life ends or there's a sad end to that so eutrophication is what you need to know and you need to know those things in that order because they can give you mcqs in which you can put them in order then you have that the idea that if you take these nitrates or these ammonium salts so ammonium ion because it's a positive ion can be displaced okay so that means that if you add calcium oxide 
then what calcium will do is calcium will react with ammonium salts or because calcium oxide is basic. Hai. It will react and ammonia gas will be lost. So that is also another important thing that if you add nitrogen fertilizer and calcium hydroxide together, then you can have loss of nitrogen. So that is another thing you need to know. And that's all you need to know about ammonium. Next thing that I'm going to talk about is sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is a very important chemical impact one of the highest produced chemicals in the world, sulfuric acid H2SO4. You need to remember that H2SO4 is something that has covalent bonding, but when you dissolve it in water, it breaks into ions, just like every other acid. You need to remember that sulfuric acid is made in four steps. There's sulfur, which is converted to sulfur dioxide by burning. So sulfur is yellow solid, you convert it to burning. Now, sulfur is a fact that check the exam. They will not directly ask you about this, but should be in the back of your head that sulfur exists as molecule of S8. So there was once an MCQ about MR of sulfur and they gave you a hint, but because many students did not know about it, they weren't accepting of even if they got this right result. So sulfur exists as molecules S8. So remember that if you have MC, you can say that MR256 is not a S8 molecule is obviously a molecule with eight sulfur. So that is 256. Sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide, that it is acidic. It dissolves in water to make sulfur, uh, sulfurous acid. You don't need to know the name, but you need to know that that will cause acid rain. You need to know that this is antiseptic, which means that is used as, uh, used to bleach wood pulp, wood pulp for paper industry. You need to know about that. You need to know that it is used in uh, when we are trying to pack water. So, uh, sorry, food packaging. So, food packaging is where we need this because it is antiseptic, it's acidic, it kills bacteria. So, it is used in food packaging. So, that is another thing you need to know about. The third thing, uh, food packaging, ilawa, food uh, preservative, ke pe bhi use kar sakte the third thing you need to know about this is that it is used as a bleach. So if you go bleach, ke upar hai, toh bhi hai. bleaching wood pulp for paper industry is a very specific use of that thing that you need to remember. Uh, then you need to remember that the two raw materials of this thing, in fact, three raw materials, kya kya hai? sulfur, hai, oxygen, and the third one is water that I'll get to in a bit. So you take sulfur dioxide, you react it with oxygen, and this is a reversible reaction, produces sulfur trioxide, and this one, you need to do it at one to two ATM pressure. You need to do it at 250 to 450 degrees Celsius temperature. And you need to do it in V2O5 catalyst. Okay. So this is the only catalyst in your syllabus that you need to remember, which is not transition metal, but a compound of transition metal. So that's an interesting fact about V2O5. Baki sub catalyst, jo apne yaad karne, wo iron hai, nickel hai, rhodium platinum hai. They are all, uh, elements, not compound. This is the only compound uh, that you need to remember from transition metals. I'm not saying that or not. Obviously, phosphoric acid catalyst hai, zyme is yeast catalyst. Hai. So that is something you need to remember. But this is a transition metal catalyst, which is a compound. Okay, then what happens? This sulfur trioxide, if you dissolve it in water, you can get sulfuric acid. But it is also a highly exothermic reaction. So this is usually avoided. What we do instead is that we dissolve it in sulfur, sulfuric acid. So you get oleum. You don't need to know its formula. Just remember that you add to it. This equation is never asked you. And it will give you an equation if it comes to this equation. And it will say that this is then reacted with water to produce 2H2SO4. A uh, question that they can ask you about this one over here is how much sulfur trioxide is present to produce how much sulfuric acid or how much sulfur trioxide will react with how much water. So things like that. So one to you is that moles are relevant question. Ho sakte hai. Dusre aap se question ho sakte hai about properties of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid ki properties ko sulfur dioxide ki properties se ya uses se confuse nahi karna. Ye ek baut, uh, this is something that examiner tests with. So examiner ko pata hai ke bachon ko sulfuric acid ke chapter mein pata hai that sulfur trioxide is used for food packaging. So wo bolde ka sulfuric acid is used for food packaging. So read the question carefully. Uses of sulfur dioxide are that is bleach, used in bleaching wood pulp for vapor industry and food packaging and preservative. It is not sulfuric acid. Zain mein rakhye ga. All right. So that is sulfuric acid. 
इसके यूज क्या है सो सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड के दो यूज आपको बताने चाहिए नंबर वन दैट यू नीड टू नो दैट इट इज यूज इन बैटरीज सो दैट इज वेर इट इज यूज इट इज यूज एज एन इलेक्ट्रोलाइट इन बैटरीज ओके द सेकेंड थिंग यू नीड टू नो इज दैट इट इज यूज टू मेक और मैन्युफैक्चर डिटर्जेंट एंड फर्टिलाइजर्स कौन से फर्टिलाइजर्स सल्फेट वाले फर्टिलाइजर्स you need to remember that they are not it is not directly used as a detergent or fertilizer because examiner has tested that because students yaad kar lete hain ki acha detergent hai fertilizer hai wo ye nahi yaad rakhte ki usko banane mein use hone sulfuric acid ko nahi hum directly use kar sakte all right okay so that is sulfuric acid moving on we have so many small मेटल्स की प्रॉपर्टीज नॉन मेटल की प्रॉपर्टीज हमने काफी हद तक उनकी बात की थी आयरन की प्रॉपर्टीज हमने बात की थी कि हाई कार्बन स्टील जो होता है वो कहाँ यूज होता है तो दैट इज समथिंग आई वुड लाइक टू रेफर टू दैट आयरन कैन बी यूज टू मेक स्टील एंड दैट स्टील कैन हैव हाई कार्बन विच मीन्स इट इज स्ट्रॉन्ग बट इट विल ब्रेक इजिली सो इट इज ब्रिटल लो कार्बन स्टील मीन्स उसमें कार्बन कम है हाई अमाउंट ऑफ आयरन है और वो सॉफ्ट होगा और उसको मैलियबल करना भी इट इज मोर मैलियबल माइल्ड स्टील के यूजेज आपको आने चाहिए माइल्ड स्टील के दो यूजेज हैं दैट इट इज यूज टू मेक कार बॉडीज एंड इट इज यूज टू मेक मशीनरी सो एलोइज में माइल्ड स्टील इज द वन दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दैट माइल्ड स्टील इज यूज टू मेक कार बॉडीज एंड इट ऑन द अदर हैंड इट इज यूज टू मेक मशीनरी द अदर वन दैट यू हैव एंड यू नीड टू रिमेंबर अबाउट इज स्टेनलेस स्टील स्टेनलेस स्टील का सबको पता है दैट इज यूज टू मेक कटलरी और फूड कंटेनर एंड ऑल दैट बट वन इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्ट अबाउट दिस इज दैट इट इज यूज टू मेक सर्जिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट दैट इज समथिंग दैट एग्जामिनर कैन आस्क यू अबाउट एंड यू नीड टू रिमेंबर के इट इज स्टेनलेस स्टील दैट इज यूज टू मेक सर्जिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट और वेरी सिंपल सी बात है यू यूज इट इन वेनी द एप्लीकेशन इज वेरी सेंसिटिव तो वी कॉन्ट है रस्टेड स्टील uh, देर तो वहां पर यूज होता है कटलरी में तो ऑब्वियसली ये यूज होता ही है ठीक है कटलरी में या यूटेंसिल्स में इट इज यूज देर एंड देन द थर्ड थिंग दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर इज दैट इट इज यूज टू मेक केमिकल प्लांट बिकॉज वी डू नॉट वॉन्ट द प्लांट इट सेल्फ टू रियक्ट विद दीज रियक्शन और इफ देर इज डैम्प कंडीशन सो स्टेनलेस स्टील वहां पर यूज होता है खाली आयरन को वो आपसे आयरन की रस्टिंग आयरन रस्टिंग or corrosion as a test to measure oxygen in air so that is also something that they test about to usko wo different setups mein show karta hai kabhi wo aapko tube invert karke yahan pe iron de dega aur kahega ji ki yahan par water hai batayein ji ki kitni level of oxygen kam hoga to you have to remember that it will go up by 20% because oxygen is 20% in the air. कभी वो आपसे कह देगा कि अच्छा ये टेस्ट ट्यूब्स हैं इन टेस्ट ट्यूब्स में मैंने डिफरेंट सेटअप्स कर दिए हैं इन वॉटर दिस डनी एयर बबल्स बट यहाँ पे मैंने ऑयल की लेयर लगा दी है और दिस डजेंट हैव एनी एयर बबल्स बट यहाँ पर मैंने इसको कॉटन वूल और समथिंग कवर कर दिया बस अब वो आपको कैसे पता चलेगा कि एयर बबल्स हैं कि नहीं है रिमेंबर बॉइल्ड वाटर इफ दे टेल यू दैट इट वाज बॉइल्ड और इट वाज हीटेड बिफोर इट वाज रिएक्टेड दैट मींस उसमें सारे बबल्स निकल गए हैं एंड इट डजेंट हैव एनी एयर इन इट तो जहां पर हमारे पास एयर बबल्स हैं कुछ है वहां पर रस्टिंग होगी सो इन दिस केस यू कैन सी दैट रस्टिंग विल हैपन हेयर इफ दिस हैज एयर बबल्स सो दिस विल रस्ट If there is oil and there are no air bubbles, then this will not rust. Similarly, यहाँ पर भी अगर वो bubbles हैं तो react करेगा. अगर dissolved oxygen नहीं है तो react नहीं करेगा. और rusting नहीं होगी. But this is an evidence that you need oxygen and water for iron to rust. Otherwise, iron rust नहीं करता. So that is one test that they sometimes do. Or एक और test में जहाँ पे use होता है कि अगर हमारे पास oxygen है और उसको टेस्ट करने के वो है कि नहीं है सो दिस अ वेरी सिंपल टेस्ट ऑल दो देर आर अदर टेस्ट लाइट स्प्लेंट वाला भी तो हमने पढ़ा हुआ है हाउ डू यू प्रिवेंट रस्टिंग यू प्लेस अ बैरियर 
that's it you can have a barrier that is made from paint you can have a barrier that is made from other metal galvanizing like zinc so that is something that you can use to avoid uh, corrosion or uh, rusting in general for uh, you can also have plastic to coat that you also need to know that you have sacrificial protection is ko bhi humne detail mein baat ki thi the other metal that i want to talk about is aluminum for the which you need to remember that aluminum ions are soluble in excess hydroxide sodium hydroxide but insoluble in excess ammonium hydroxide then you need to remember that aluminum oxide al2o3 we dissolve it with cryolite so that we can do electrolysis and aluminum is a very abundant metal for that you need to be able to explain ke aluminum react kyun nahi karta agar mere paas pure aluminum hai react kyun nahi karta because aluminum has a layer of oxide aur abhi maine aapko bataya corrosion ko rokne ke liye layer use hoti hai aluminum ke upar naturally ek layer hoti hai aluminum oxide ki which means that aluminum will not react because it's not exposed to other elements in the air or around it three uses of aluminum you need to know about you need to remember that aluminum is used to manufacture aircraft parts so aircraft parts are where aluminum is used you need to remember that aluminum is used to make food containers so we use it to wrap food and all that so food containers and the third one you need to remember that because aluminum is a very good uh, electrical conductor because it has three positive charge which means it's going to give three electrons to the lattice it is used to make electric wires so these wires are relatively cheaper than the wires for copper so aluminum ke bare mein ye aapko batana chahiye all right so now we come to environmental chemistry environmental chemistry mein you have air as the first one so air ka i will just take this thing from your syllabus syllabus ko khole usko padhe wahan par directly jo jo cheeze yaad karne wali hai na wo sari ki sari aapke samne likhi hui hai let me just show those to you so if you notice over here you will notice that examiner has directly told you what they are going to ask you this is for o levels and for igcse you can find a similar thing uh, syllabus mein agar aap ja ke search kare air and water ka pura separate chapter hai aur agar aap air and water ke chapter mein jaye to aapko wahan par directly usne bataya ki usko kya chahiye so igcse ke syllabus mein wo aapse thodi si extra cheeze mangta hai but that doesn't matter because o levels wale bhi wo cheeze pad chuke hain kafi hat tak so there you go So for O levels, you need to remember that first of all, dry air. Dry air. I'm not talking about impure air. Dry air has 78% nitrogen. Sorry about the dogs. 21% oxygen. So that is the number you need to remember. Remainder is argon is the most abundant noble gas, and then you have carbon dioxide. Water नहीं है इसमें क्योंकि this is dry air. How do you dry air? You dissolve. You pass it through concentrated sulfuric acid. You need to remember that these gases can be extracted through fractional distillation. You need to remember three uses of oxygen in making steel, oxygen tents in hospital, and in welding. These are key terms. जो examiner अगर लिखता है तो आपने याद रखनी है. And then you have pollutants. You need to remember about these pollutants. In pollutants के बारे में आपको क्या पता होना चाहिए? You need to remember the source. You need to remember the problem. That is one, two things you need to remember about every. pollutant you have here so carbon monoxide ye chh aapke paas hain carbon monoxide is produced from incomplete combustion and it is toxic it is poisonous so you need to remember that so for carbon monoxide you need to remember that it is poisonous okay uh then you have methane for this you need to remember that this is greenhouse gas so it does not cause acid rain it is greenhouse gas and it is made from bacterial decay of vegetative matter nitrogen oxides nitrogen oxides mein aapne dekha that they are produced through lighting activity and internal combustion engine ab examiner is pe kaise aapko test karega wo aapko confuse karega ki nitrogen to fuel se aati hai fuel se nahi aati air se aati hai air is 78% nitrogen we just saw what this means is that the nitrogen in the air and oxygen in the air will react lekin what is common in lighting activity and internal combustion engine they both happen at very high temperature they both have high temperatures so, so that is the reason that nitrogen from the air and oxygen from the air react वैसे nitrogen और oxygen हवा में react क्यों नहीं करते इसलिए नहीं करते कि temperature इतना ज्यादा नहीं होता okay so इनका effect क्या है that nitrogen dioxide is acidic so it causes acid rain so that is the effect of this thing ozone का it causes breathing issues so breathing problems ये तो लाहौर शहर ने खुद experience किया है unfortunately sulfur dioxide they are extracted from or they are made in volcanic activity 
but this also causes it as causes acid rain as we just talked about it sulfur dioxide ka effect aur nuksan bhi ye hai aur uske uses bhi humne teen ya bhi dekhe hain unburnt hydrocarbons they are going to produce greenhouse effect and greenhouse effect is something that they can ask you about all right so you have this dekhiyega water is not a pollutant carbon dioxide is not a pollutant kahin usko pick na kar lena agar option mein aa jata hai examiner knows ke bacche confuse ho jate hain examiner does give that water or carbon dioxide produced in any reaction sure they are greenhouse gases wo temperature rise zarur karwa sakte hain enhance greenhouse effect kar sakte hain they are not pollutants we don't regard them as that uh this is o levels in igcse now the good thing is that this year they have made them the number same 78% nitrogen 21% oxygen confirm hamare samne likha hua hai dono syllabuses ka so make sure that you pick it for both of them uh for o igcse people you need to remember a little more that wo examiner ne hi bata diya ke fossil fuels mein jo sulfur dioxide hai jo fossil fuel mein sulfur hai wo burn karke sulfur dioxide kar raha hai o levels people don't need to specifically mention ke fossil fuel se wo aaya theek hai so that is one thing uh how do you deal with this so that is also another thing important for this so for we have catalytic converter in cars that is something we use to make sure that all of these that are coming from internal combustion the nitrogen oxide hai nitrogen dioxide hai carbon monoxide hai carbon dioxide to chale hum nahi rok sakte carbon hai these particles we make or unburnt hydrocarbon hai ye char ya panch jitne bhi hain catalytic converter make sure ki catalytic converter mein ye sari cheeze chahiye so aapke paas catalytic converter hai it's going to get these four things so this is a catalytic converter it's going to get hydrocarbons it's going to get carbon it's going to get carbon monoxide it's going to get nitrogen monoxide nitrogen dioxide it's going to get sulfur uh, dioxide lekin uska ye kuch kar nahi sakta so we'll skip that and what does it do it converts all of this into useful gases which are not pollutant remember these are not pollutants which are steam or water carbon dioxide and these are the two important gases and nitrogen these three gases that are made in catalytic converter catalytic converter has a catalyst in fact it has three catalysts you don't need to remember kaun se catalyst hain you don't need to remember ke wo kis ke upar kaun sa catalyst react karta hai i've seen some notes jin mein unhone bahut detail di hui hai agar aap a levels kar rahe hain wo detail zarur yaad rakhein but you are not doing that right so is wajah se you don't need to get into that all right so we have these ox oxides nitrogen air ki sare humne pad liye एयर के बारे में और क्या हमें याद करना है हमें ये चीजें याद करनी है आई कॉपी दिस फ्रॉम द सिलेबस अगेन आप लोग सिलेबस पढ़ें सिलेबस में ये सारे के सारे फैक्ट्स उसने क्लियरली बताए हैं सो इफ यू लुक ओवर हेयर व्हाट डज इट से यू नीड टू नो हाउ टू फिक्स दिस सो कैटलिटिक कन्वर्टर की हमने बात कर ली देन डी सल्फराइजेशन दैट्स एन अदर इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड डी सल्फराइजेशन दैट यू नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट सल्फर कमिंग आउट ऑफ दैट फॉसिल फ्यूल बर्न इन फैक्ट्रीज एंड ऑल दैट वो सल्फर हम कैसे उसको निकालते हैं वी यूज कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट इसकी एक सिंपल सी रिएक्शन है यू टेक कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट एंड यू रिएक्टेड विद सल्फर डाइऑक्साइड सिंपल अब कैल्शियम कार्बोनेट में से कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड निकलेगी और कैल्शियम सल्फाइट बन जाएगा सो हुआ क्या एस ओ टू ने सीओ टू को स्विच कर दिया so we let carbon dioxide go out and we keep sulfur dioxide with us you don't need to go into any more detail of this thing you just need to remember calcium carbonate is a white powder limestone hai uske upar bahut sari baatein hum kar chuke hain sulfur dioxide bahut sari baatein kar chuke hain carbon dioxide and calcium sul sulfide is made jo hum nikal lete hain so that is one reaction we do to make sure ki sulfur dioxide is not given into the atmosphere then you need to remember that carbon monoxide is poisonous you need to remember that nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide form acid rain the effects on a uh, ph of water change hota hai to aquatic animals ko effect hota hai unki life ko nuksan pahunchta hai buildings are made from calcium carbonate or any carbonate they react with that acid in rain and they produce ca carbon dioxide to building kharab hoti hai we have talked about ozone we have talked about that ozone in lower atmosphere causes breathing issues but in upper atmosphere it's good for us because it saves us from harmful rays and that ozone when it depletes because of chlorofluorocarbons chlorofluorocarbons kahan se bante hain they are made by substitution of hydrocarbons or wo chlorofluorocarbons they are going to damage the ozone so you just need to know that you don't need to know any fancy facts about it koi zyada detail yaad karne ki zarurat nahi hai ozone ke bare mein 
All right. Then we have three main reactions, which are carbon cycle mein important. Hai. You have combustion, which is when you burn carbon-based compounds. Respiration, which is when you take glucose, which has carbon in it, and you release carbon dioxide. And photosynthesis as one way of undoing that, because photosynthesis is the only one of these processes which reduces the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Photosynthesis, ke liye you need to know that you have a catalyst, which is chloroplast or chlorophyll. So you need to remember that. My bio is a All right. Then we have carbon cycle. How does it regulate carbon dioxide? It regulates it because photosynthesis takes care of extra carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So it's always a good idea to plant more trees. In fact, you should all do that. Uh, exam day, kya ke na, plant a tree or dua kare, ke aap ke result hai. Okay. All right. You need to know that these are greenhouse gases that lead to global warming. Greenhouse effect is not bad. Enhanced greenhouse effect is bad. Global warming is bad. And that is something we that can have serious consequences on life in general. All right, then we have water. I can guess that you guys are getting tired already, but we are almost done here. We are almost done here. So bear with me. Water me kya facts yaad karne hai? Water me aapko water treatment yaad karne hai. Aapko pata na chahi ke water naturally us me baut saare dissolved substances hoote hai, which are good. We need those. So we need those mineral salts in water. We need some oxygen that is dissolved in water. Aquatic animals, uh, obviously they need that. And there is organic matter that is dissolved in it, which is when it goes to coral reefs and all that, to pe kafi under. but water can have pollutants. These pollutants come from these sources, as you can read them, nitrates from fertilizer. We have already talked about it. It's devastating effects in eutrophication, phosphates from fertilizers and detergents. And again, isquav relate karo ke sulfuric acid is used in making these fertilizers and detergents. And then harmful microbes that are present in water that can cause water-based uh, contaminated water se jo bimariyan hoti hain, khas taur pe bachon ke hoti hain. And unfortunately, our country has leading stats on that, unfortunately. So that is a problem we need to resolve. In fact, I would suggest ke agar aap mein se kisi ko bhi chemistry mein interest hai, and not just chemistry, environmental chemistry in particular, then go grow up. And when you grow up, you try to find solutions for this. There are many, many good organizations that are working on this and we can always use more help. All right, so then we have environmental effects of these things. You can see that there are benefits and there are harms. So wo humne sab dekh lene hai, and we have talked about it. Then you have purification of water supply. Usme kya steps hai? First of all, you have filtration to remove insoluble things. So ye insoluble solids hai, jo ke sare ke sare separate filter separate option de soluble to wo to separate hogi. it's always the insoluble thing that is separated carbon ko wo keh dega ke carbon is used to remove solids it's not carbon filter nahi hai carbon is used to remove taste and odor from this water supply then we have chlorine chlorine se hum water ko disinfect karte hain because it changes the ph a little bit kills the bacteria so these are the three important steps in treating water okay uh, how can you convert sea water to drinkable water desalination which is similar to distillation uh, thoda sa usme fark hai but you just need to know ki distillation or desalination are similar as far as their details are concerned and that is the end of today's lesson allah hafiz